down here in the Bear Cave Studios for another episode of that OTBS on that bill shit with me, your host, Freddy Aloso, with my co-host, Biggie Mafia himself. What's going on, bro? Yo, what's up, man? Yo, yo, listen. The devil is a liar, brother. Let me tell you that, man. The devil is a liar, bro. Yo, how long we been trying to set this joint up, man? An hour. <laughs> An hour is what we've been doing. Yo, if it wasn't if it wasn't today, bro, it was Amazon, you know, almost messed the package up. You know what I'm saying? Pause. You know, almost almost fumbled the bag, man. Like anyway, but yo, we ain't, we ain't gonna fret on that, man. We're not gonna get a devil too much uh too much energy energy this week, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, what's up with you, brother? I'm good, bro. Nothing crazy going on over here. You know, just uh. Living the dream. Pro Bowl's going on right now. Yeah, I know. I know. I Super Bowl exactly. next week. <sighs> Bro, are you watching I, any of that Pro Bowl? I got arrested for I, his third DUI. <laughs> I mean, Bro, what, else, I mean, what else can go on? <laughs> yo, listen, man. Where are we going to start? I mean, yo, my, you know, my boy sent me the link to that, right? To see that he got arrested mm-hmm. and... Uh, I saw his mugshot. Did, did you see his mugshot? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, did yeah. he look? Con- did he look concerned? No. no Not even he, in the slightest. The dude is. Listen. Whenever you are smiling in your mugshot, that you know that tells me that you don't got too much concerns about being arrested. You just know that this is kind of a formality, and uh, twenty four hours you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be out of there. Uh, you know, you're not too worried about it, because I know me. I don't give a goddamn what I got arrested for. My face would not, I would not be smiling, bro. I'd be. I would not be smiling. No way. You know, like I. Texas. Hell no. Texas, on your third uh, DUI conviction, it's two to 10 years prison term. He ain't getting nowhere. He ain't getting nowhere. He's not getting out of that, bro. Not a. Uh... Not with his son playing in the Super Bowl next week. I'm listen. I'm willing to bet my my entire check for the month of February that that dude is not going to see any real jail time or have any worries or concerns about any 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 jail time because uh for, didn't his son went to Texas A and M and played there and all that? Oh please, forget it, bro. He forget went to it, Texas. Man, Texas. Yeah, yeah. What I, what I said, Texas A and M. Yeah. Listen, listen, you see, look at me. I got confused. I didn't even, I barely graduated high school. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was the same school. But look, man, it, you know, I'm not worried about that dude going to jail. His son is a multi-time uh, Super Bowl champion. He's the face of the nation right now. You know, like, one phone call to Taylor Swift and that dude's going to be out of there immediately. Immediately. He's going to have to sign some stuff, send it out. Mhm. Mhm. There's gonna have to be some Super Bowl tickets involved, I think. Oh, of course. <laughs> that's of good. Course, that's good. Bro. My mind. Yeah. Of course, man. Like, like you know, that's that's not even. This is this is like non-news. You know what I'm saying? Like, this. Please, this is this is all just a formality, and I don't How think we need to worry. Has he spent getting his dad and his brother out of legal trouble? <sighs> I'm, I'm going to say it has to be up around. Last year. Yeah, I'm going to say north of $500,000. And Easy. that's just, you know, and his brother's just a, just a weirdo. Man, I'm not, Bro. I'm not, I'm not going to go, <laughs> I'm not going to go, go too far in it. Pause. I'm not going to go too far into that, but, uh. Bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't want, I don't want, I don't want them the, the alphabet mafia to come after me and you know, to start right. getting of a course. whole bunch of hate mail and all this other stuff. But bro, listen, man, his brother's a strange guy. You know, it has nothing to do with his preferences. He just has a, he moves kind of crazy. You know, just he moves real different, real different. You know, he reminds me of a guy that might be on an episode of Law and Order SVU one day. Uh, I don't know. She I gave see. me permission. She, she said it was she, okay. She said it was okay. She's lying. I paid her. Oh, all right. 
All I right, gave sir. all step the money. Into, step, step into the cell. <laughs> right. <laughs> into, into Ice Cube's famous line, that was rape, man. You <laughs> raped that girl. <laughs> Oh, uh, no Golden Globes for Ice Cube anytime soon. But yeah, it is what it is, bro. And you, uh, have you watched any of this Pro Bowl that's going on as we speak? I watched some. I was watching some of it before. Um, I like the concept better mm-hmm. than years past. Mm-hmm. Uh, the players mm-hmm. seem to be more into it. You see them mm-hmm. more on the sidelines. The coaches, you know, you got Ray Lewis, Peyton Manning. Wes Welker, mm-hmm. DeMarcus Ware, Eli. Mm-hmm. You got a who's who on those side. And Ray Lewis looks like he's having a blast running that team. Like he's yeah, ready he to jump right in. He does. He does. <sighs> Listen, bro. I, I can't I can't do it, man. Yo, I it's I haven't been able to watch any like postseason type festivities in a long time and be able to enjoy it. Um, it's like, to me, watching the Pro Bowl is <laughs> you know, it's not easy, bro, especially because our team has been so good these past few years. Like, yeah. we we should have been in the Super Bowl like these past three to four years, you know? And at least it's one. not like at least, at least one. one of them. And it's not like 10 years ago when our team was trash and you had no choice but to to root for like the Giants or or the Seahawks or the Steelers and you know it was it was enjoyable. But when you have a good team and they're supposed to be there, it's kind of just like I, I'm hating, bro. I'm hating. I don't want to see the Chiefs. I don't want to see the 49ers. I don't want to see Stefan Diggs playing tug of war with fucking CD Lamb. I don't I don't want to watch that, man. I don't want to hear about Josh Allen playing golf. I don't want to hear it, man. I don't. And if I see one more advertisement on ESPN about Josh Allen being in the running for the MVP, listen, man, Josh needs to take his ass home and sit down and recoup, man. Just the whole team just needs to, I don't. I don't want to see nobody see, saying nothing. Digs come out. You know, they try to make all this stuff about what he said and Oh God, bro! I just what do you think about that. What do you, I know? A lot of people mm-hmm. are saying different things. Mm-hmm. Oh, and what's he gonna do? Where's he gonna go? Is he gonna move? Uh, is he happy? He stay or is he out? Um, I'm gonna say this on February fourth, two thousand and four. It's too early, man. It's, it's still it's still too early. See, last year it was a little bit different because we got closer to the season starting, and it was just like, you know, he's not reporting to uh, many camp and all of this other stuff. So it was like, all right, maybe something. But you know, they still just lost a, a couple weeks ago, and the wounds are still very fresh. Now he didn't say anything that was like, you know, like he gave too much details as to how he felt and. But right. you know, like you said, it is what it is. You just never know. So I'm not, I'm not feeding into it, like, like as 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 many you know of these media outlets are, or a lot of the, a lot of other Bills fans are, bro. But um, I'm just, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. And at the end of the day, I hate to say this because I love the dude, but if he wants to go, all right, uh-huh. you know, it's not Josh Allen saying that. Hey, my, big, my biggest concern this offseason is restructuring Josh's contract. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's going from an $18 million cap hit to $42 million. And that chews up a whole lot of cap with a lot of space and a lot of guys we need to reach out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it yeah. makes me a little bit nervous on that. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to do something, especially if he wants the help that we need to kind of get us over that hump. I'm going to be honest. I don't think our offense needs too much too much tweaking. Uh, I still think towards the end of that stretch uh, in our season, he wasn't playing the greatest football, you know. I think with a decent offseason with Joe Brady and him kind of 
getting together with him, they'll be all right. And, you know, we've said it on shows prior to this. I think the biggest thing we need to fix this offense is our defense. As, you know, as my daughter Avery would say, they look old, musty, dusty, and crusty. That's what just, it's just, that's what it's it looks true. like. It's so true. They just, they, 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 they ragtag, man. They just, they just, I was watching some highlights, some Bills highlights on YouTube from like, like five, six years ago. And I'm like, God damn, I didn't even know, I, I didn't even remember Jordan Poyer was on the team that long. Or Micah Hyde. It was like some of these guys, it's like, Man, these dudes is these dudes is kind of up there, you know. I think it's kind of time we uh we 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 separate ourselves with them, you know. Well, they're, they're both free agents at the end of this year. For Davius White, we don't know what he's gonna look like uh, if he's gonna yeah. be healthy. Elam looks like yeah. a must. Oh, like, I mean, if, if that playoff, if he looked like he, he got beat on. Every play except for that interception, and oh like they kind of did. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if I'm his uh if I'm his agent, I'm just pretty much telling him, listen. As soon as that phone rings, I'm picking it up and taking the first offer that uh yeah. <laughs> that we get because yeah because yo bro you said it look yo look we out we out bro For we real. out. And, and by the way, if you see the hoodie, it says we out. It has nothing to do with the Bills. This is a famous line from uh, Harriet Tubman. Uh, we out. Uh, Let's go. You know, it, it was it was well documented. I learned that in, in, in Beach Channel High School that she said that to one of the slave masters. When he called, he said, hey, where are you niggas going? She said, we out. <laughs> we out. <laughs> uh, just... A little behind the scenes note. Um, <laughs> we are going to be bringing you guys some new stuff this year or yes, within these next couple episodes. We're going to start bringing on some guests, some friends of ours. You know, little uh, Tony Soprano's line right there. He's a friend of us. Yeah, yeah. He's a friend of ours. So <laughs> <laughs> he's one of us. He's a good guy. And just just give you guys a warning. Some uh, some some folks like us. Yeah, no, no. Some folks like us, and some folks that are way worse than us. And I'm uh putting this disclaimer out there now. We are not responsible for anything that these people say in the future, because <laughs> uh, yeah, you got some pretty uh wild people out there that we know and. We're just gonna have to uh, open the gate and unleash the dogs on 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 the public, you know. Like it is what it is, bro. Disclaimer before the McAfee show: the views and points of everybody else on the show do not reflect the ones of the host. Oh. And and that's saying a lot, man, because we say some pretty outlandish shit. We sh we show. say some crazy shit. You know, and I, you know, me me. Like I know, I say some outlandish shit. You know, Freddie, he's been known to don't let him get that 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 Apple Jack, that Apple uh, Apple Jack Daniels. Uh, oh shit, he got it on you. Listen, bro. It's here, bro. And this is Sunday. This is the Lord's Day, so we're not gonna drink too much. I mean, you know, he could he could do what he he could do what he could do what he, could do what he you know he could do what he do. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick. I got some water. I gotta go to work tomorrow. Uh, you know, I I'm not gonna go too crazy. You know, if it was Saturday, it might be a different story. But, yo, bro, what what are we going to get into first, man? Because, yo, yo, brother, listen. You brought up the Vince McMahon stuff last week. Right? I did. I did. I just and dropped it in. Just a little. Bro. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say something right now. I don't know the 100 percent ins and out or what you guys brought up on your other show, right? But if if for those of you that don't know or haven't read the ins and out or the details of these documents that have come out about Vince McMahon, I'm just gonna give you one. And this was this was 
the first detail that I heard. So God knows what else is out there, right? This dude was having a threesome with this chick, right? You know, the chick that is involved. And she's saying that during the course of the threesome, that this dude, Vince McMahon, stopped in the middle of the act and took a dump on her head. Like, he took a shit <laughs> on her head. Oh, do... All right. So, <laughs> I've had some time to process. Oh, how do yo, you please, please, please. Like, all right. No, listen, man. Let me, let me paint, a, paint a picture for you. Vince, Vince, this girl is getting banged out by some other dude, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden mm-hmm. you hear, <laughs> and it's Vince <laughs> dropping the shit on her forehead. Like, how does yo, he... yo, yo, listen, man, <laughs> listen, 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 bro. The only way that I could, you know, I'm going to get a little fucking depictive right now, you know, so viewer discretion is advised. The only thing that I could picture is, you know, like they, they're they like Eiffel towering the chick. You know what I'm saying? And the other dude's back there putting in the work and, you know, he getting to the... And then he just, hold on a second, God damn it. <laughs> Turns around and, hold her head still. Ah! <laughs> you know, he got that voice it going. Was it was and me. He, <laughs> it was me! It was me, I said! Oh, God damn! Well, what's that smell? It smells like shit in here. It was me, Austin. I took a shit on her head. But like, also, like, if you, if you, if you that other dude, right? If you back there and you putting in work, and and you and the guy on the other end starts doing that, what do you do? Like, how do you? Listen, man. That other dude got to listen. She got to be gay, man. Bro, bro, I don't understand that shit. Listen, threesome. Over. Yeah, right. And also, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to I want to backtrack a little bit for those because I know the vernacular gets kind of mixed up a little bit. I, I want to take that back the, as far as I know, because I, I didn't hear anything about no uh, gay sex happening between Vince and his dude. All right. There's a difference between a threesome and a chick getting a train run on her. Apparently, she was getting a train run on a train run on her because, you know, a threesome would entail all three of them having, uh, you know, interactions with one another, which as far as we know, didn't happen. So I want to, you know, reiterate what I, reiterate what I said. She was getting a train run on her and Vince McMahon took a shit on her head and forced her to, that's disgusting, bro. I don't mean to make jokes out of it, but the shit is disgusting, but it sounds funny. Uh, It's wild. And Bro. I think I brought it up last week. They've given him the Chris Benoit treatment on the website. So they have wiped Vince McMahon clean off the WWE website. All of Brock Lesnar's stuff on the oh, WWE oh, shop oh. has been put up for sale. It's all on clearance. That's wild, bro. That's yep. wild. It's insane. That is wild. That is wild, man. That is and wild. I mean, I, I, just, so the NDAs that were signed mm, mm, were mm. not made um, by WWE or with WWE's knowledge, so they might not be valid. So if that's the case, it's about to be Niagara Falls. Oh my gosh, man. And then I don't know how true it is, but I heard John Laurinaitis is, is coming out and saying that he was a victim, that he didn't even have a choice but to take part. <laughs> that's okay. let me start here. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my I don't want to do I don't want to do this, Vince. I man, I don't know if I don't. I don't know if I want to do this, Vince. This doesn't sound. Shut up and play your caca. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like that's. <laughs> All right. Fine. I guess. You know. Like. Shut up. That's the stupidest. <laughs> no. Oh God. 
Oh God. <laughs> really? That's your that's your out. That's what you're trying to get? Oh yo, bro, listen, man. Listen. Yo. <laughs> his his oh, brother shit. is turning over in his grave right now. That shit. Oh wow. Bro, I I don't know, man. Yo, like like but where do you go from here, man? Where do you go? Like he he can never come back now. You can't even mention his name. Like you said, he's gonna get the Vin, the the Crispin Watt treatment and yep. just be erased from history. From from a company he built. Well, his dad started it, but he blew this thing out of the water, and now you're fucked. You'll Bro. never see the screen again. You think Stephanie and, comes back and makes an appearance? It's possible. I think she mm-hmm. goes backstage. I don't see her coming on camera, but I know mm-hmm. one of the reasons C left and Shane left was because they caught wind of what he was doing. What is that? Are you serious? That was that's some of the murmurings that are going around. If that's the right word, I guess maybe. Damn. Damn. But the shit is wild, man. Like it's. Damn. It's insane. Damn, bro. Bro, this is crazy. But I, I, you know, I will say, this has been out for what, like two weeks now? This news? Yeah, it's about two weeks. Mm-hmm. So, now, my question is, if you don't hear any, because, you know, they, they, they made that claim, like, oh, we did this so the other victims can come out and tell their side of the story and, you know, all this other stuff. So if no other woman comes out from here until the end of this and doesn't, like, say, oh, I have a story, too. Like, do we think that, all right, this chick might just be lying? I mean, they so, have text messages. Do that. Apparently... <laughs> the FBI are involved as well because of the whole trafficking thing. Oh, boy. So, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better, I think. It's crazy. Uh, Well, I don't know. I I guess it's over. So, is Vince going to go to jail? (laughs) <laughs> I am gonna go to jail. No, bro. Like <clears throat> that's the tough one. If it comes up, uh, like how would you what criminal charges would be there? Like if it was consensual, but it's coming mm-hmm. out. I don't I don't know the legal aspect of it to really try. Well if if they're talking about sex trafficking, um Yo, that's some pretty serious shit, bro. Like that's, that's crazy, right? You're looking at some some real some real uh, uh I don't how know. Long, I mean how, how long before Law and Order SVU does an episode? Straight from the headlines. You know, that's their <laughs> that's their motto, you know? Yo, this shit almost doesn't seem real, man. Yo, and you know, I said this to somebody uh, like a little while ago. Do you realize that the January of every year for like the past five or six years has been like crazy? Like there's always been some like wild, like wild things happening. Like didn't Kobe pass away in January? The start of February. It was like, was it the, oh, maybe, hold on. Yeah, I feel like you know every January, like there's some massive, like like a bomb gets dropped, and I don't know, like that's some wild stuff. Then you know you also had the Cat Williams dropping bombs on fucking Cedric and Steve Harvey and all this other stuff. That bro, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, don't January twenty sixth was Co- when Kobe passed. Yo, that messed me up, man. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first athlete that passed away that really like hit home like i i had i had posters of kobe on like my notebooks for school in my room like slam magazine like i had all that stuff his jersey like i was a huge kobe fan kobe and iverson during that era were my dudes 
so I said it last week, um, and you know, my lifelong friends know this. I I was a Shaquille O'Neal fan from every team that he went to. And I can honestly tell you that 10 years when Shaq was with the Lakers, I was, you know, I don't like to admit this, but I was one of those avidly annoying Laker fans. Like, bro, I had all kinds of, I had the Lakers warm-up gear that I'd wear after every playoff, like every playoff series win. I, 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 I swear to you, I had the, the Lakers warm-up the break, with the breakaway pants. Uh, that my mom got from the NBA store that used to be in Manhattan. I don't know if it's still there anymore. Yes, but yep. yo, I, I had a yo. This is how this is how gay I was, bro. And I, I had a bedazzled Lakers bracelet. <laughs> I had a fucking Lakers bracelet that I would wear just to fucking like like we had a bunch of Kings fans. Every time we beat the Kings, I'd be like, yo, look, look. look Look, uh, yeah. yo, oh man! But you know, I, I say that to say, and like I said, I was a big Shaq fan, and my boy Eric was a huge Kobe fan. And then me and him would have our beef, like, no, Shaq is the leader of the team. He'd be like, no, Kobe's the leader. But anyway, I say that to say, you know, Kobe was a huge deal when I was in high school to me, man. And yo, finding that out, and then to have that happen with your daughter is. It still sucks to even think about it, bro. For real, man. For real. It's uh okay, it's January. We lost Carl Weathers. Apollo Creed. Bro. Which is nuts. Like bro. And I was talking to one of my boys about this yesterday. It's crazy to see where people know him from. Mm-hmm. So like us, that's Apollo Creed. Like mm-hmm. that will never be Apollo Creed, and that's it. You got some like, oh, that's Chubbs from Happy Gilmore. Like, that's where they <laughs> like, my little guy, he's like, oh, he was in The Mandalorian. So he knows him from Star Wars. I'm like, mm-hmm. the spectrum of where yeah. he's recognized is <sighs> Yo, yo, man. Yo, you are so right, man. You know what else is crazy? So my boy Matt, uh, shout out to my boy Matthew, man. He hit me and he said, uh, yo, it's crazy to think, right? Like when we first saw him, like, because I, I remember him from the Rocky movies and all of this. When we first saw him, right, and saw him in his glory days and in and, and Rocky and Action Jack, all this stuff, right? We are the age that he was... When we first saw him, you know what I'm saying? Like, just to think, like, how much time Damn. Has, 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 right? Yo, <laughs> like, it's crazy. That's you know what I'm saying? I'm fine right there. Yo, it's crazy. And, yo, that dude, oh, man. Like, I cannot, first of all, Rocky Three to me, best Rocky yes. of all time. Three and four. Of all time. Sorry, three and four yeah. is, is, is the best, man. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yo, he has the most, to me, the most popular motivational lines in Rocky Three. There is no tomorrow. There this is guy no. will knock you on your ass, man. <laughs> yo, yo, I'm telling you, Get bro. Get your hands up, Rock. Come on. Keep your hands up. What's the matter with you? What's the matter? You want to be laid up in the hospital for three weeks this time? Come on, man. He's hooking. He's hooking. He's hooking. There is no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I just oh, man. Seen probably yesterday. Crazy. Oh, bro, and just everything. Not to mention, many people don't know he played for the Raiders and Al Davis. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You just dropped the ball. You just dropped the jewel on me, bro. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. I did not know that. Yeah, man. look it up. Oh shit! Seventy something. Wow, yo, that's crazy. And then they took him out in Rocky Four. Forty nine. Forty nine. Yep. Wow, man, that's wild. That is some wild stuff, bro. And uh, yo, like I just said, didn't fast forward to Rocky Four. They 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 killed him. (laughs) Fucking killed him. If Rocky would have just threw in that damn towel. No, 
Find the damn towel. Go to the towel. <laughs> Go to the damn towel. Fucking Rocky's a bastard, man. Yo, look, yo, I don't mean to, to veer too far off the, the, the trail. Do it. As an older guy, right? Or as an older person, let me not just say guy. And this goes out to everybody. I want y'all to really think about this. Think about all the, the, the things that you've watched growing up, right? That you watch now, and you're like, yo, this character that I thought was supposed to be like some beloved character, a part of this movie, that you watch now, and you're like, yeah, that was a fucking asshole, man. Or that or the woman, like the love interest, like, yo, she was a bitch, bro. Like, what the fuck? And I'm gonna tell you which one stands out to me, and bro, I, 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 I got one in my mind. Mm -hmm. If it's the same. I want to see. I want to see if it links up. And bro, Forrest Gump is my favorite movie of all time. Yes, is my favorite. I can watch that movie over and over and over again, seven days a week, right? And it was about a f like ten years ago that I started to realize, yo, yo, Jenny's a bitch, man. Bitch, yes. Yo, Jenny is a fucking asshole, bro. And and you want to know something? You want to know how many women that I know are just like Jenny? That's my A lot of them, right? A lot of women are just like Jenny. And I know they're going to be, I know women are going to be mad. Hey, listen, I'm sure there's dudes out there that you can compare to in movies. It is what it is. But there are a lot of women out there that are just like Jenny. Mm -hmm. That guy who loves you, you know, he might not have everything you want right now. But then what happens? But he do he does know what love is. He does know what love is. And then what happened to Jenny? He done fucked around. He done fucked around. And guess what? Your monkey ass done caught Hep C. And now you're out of here. That's what you get. You want to come back to Forrest? Fuck you, bitch. That's what I say. Fuck I you. Watching, and, mm, I was watching mm. it the other day. <laughs> and me and Marty were watching it. And we're like, oh, she's the biggest bitch in the world. 100% without a shadow of a doubt. Like, he does everything for you. He gets you out of trouble. He does this, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Not childhood home, all that shit. And you repay him by not one not telling him me as a kid until you get sick and you're about to die so that he can take care. What? I'll tell you something. And you know, one thing that they left out of that that movie, and just Paul Forrest, man. Paul Forrest. The dude never even went to go get a DNA test because it's not like the fucking kid looked like him any goddamn way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That would have been the first thing I did was uh, go get a, ah, you named him after me. That don't make him mine. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I need to make sure that uh, you're not playing me. How many cutscenes did they show her in dudes laying in the bed and her packing her clothes oh, and left? In a car. I don't know that this is... Like, oh, come on, come on. In the backseat at a Black oh, Panther party. Like, I'm sorry, I ruined your Black Panther party. <laughs> <laughs> he should not be hitting until, you it wasn't until I want to say probably about 10 10 to 12 years ago that it finally clicked for me that Jenny was the girl from Princess Bride Princess Buttercup that blew my fucking mind <laughs> we've had conversations off camera Princess Bride is one of my favorite movies of all. Still have yet to see the movie. Still have yet to see it. Bro. Still have yet to see it, bro. But I'm gonna take your word for it. Tell you, and just, just listening, just listening to you say Princess Buttercup is like, God damn, son. Like, just... bro, watch watch the movie. Yeah, I probably I'll check it out, bro. I'll check it out, man. Yo, bro, who comes who comes in a close second to Jenny and, and off the top of your head? Just you know, shooting the shit here. Who comes in the close second for biggest uh, 
TV. I'm not gonna say bitches, man. That's a hall. That's a hall. Women, just foul women. How about we say it like that? Who comes in a close second to you as a uh, foulest women from TV or movies of all time that they that they passed off on us uh, as like good women? That's a tough one. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one. I got I got her ready to go. Go ahead, go ahead. This one might shock a lot of people. You ready? Go ahead. Coming into a close second to Jenny from Forrest Gump. Pam Beasley from the office. Ooh. Bro, the more I watch that shit, the more I say to myself, yo. <laughs> You were cheating on this dude, Roy, up until the entire time that you guys broke up and you got with Jen, right? Like, why are we making it seem like that this chick wasn't in her office pretty much flirting with this fucking dude the entire time? Damn. Yo, bro, I'm listen, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Damn, I walked into a... I walk into a workplace and Bree is fucking doing half the shit she was doing to Jim and we're engaged. Jim's gonna get his ass kicked. I'm sorry. Jim, I'm, I'm gonna just have to whip Jim's ass and me and Bree gonna have to have a conversation. Cause you're not gonna be having flirty eyes and, you know, uh, playing these little <laughs> giggly games with this dude sitting three feet from you. And, and, and get, yo, come on, man. And we glorifying this. Oh, it's, one of the, it's a great love story. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Because she could have broke up with the dude Roy at any time. I'm just saying. She could have just been like, you know what? I'm not feeling you, dude. Uh, okay. I think we're going to call it quits. All right. I just thought of one. All right. Go ahead, brother. Laura Winslow. Oh, shit. <laughs> Laura Winslow. Steve Urkel. My man. Put in that work. Everything for her. She treated him like shit. And it wasn't until he turned into Stefan or Kel that she was like, oh, okay, now I can fuck. Oh, come on. Bro, you know what? I don't know why I never thought of that, but you are absolutely this dude, Steve Urkel, could have could have died drinking that that damn elixir. He didn't know that shit was gonna work. Right? It looked like every time he drank it, he was having convulsions. Yeah. Now we're going to get a possible spinoff where they're married? No, I don't want to see that, bro. I'm sorry. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it. I, 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 You know what? All I need was, all I need is one episode, right? Opening, opening, and all the credits in, and you see Nora, Laura knocking on the door, right? And Steve opens. Oh, hi, Laura. What are you doing here? And the camera goes on Laura, and she's fucking, you know, they show it now. She's fucking 295 pounds. <laughs> talking about Steve, I realize my mistakes now. And he's get out of here, bitch. Just fucking slam the door right in her face. Get out of here. <laughs> Look at the, no spinoff. I'm sorry. You had your chances. You blew it. You blew it. All right. <laughs> And you know, oh, yeah. you know what's unfair? You know what's unfair? How many movies do you see a woman is with a guy who treats her like shit, right? And and all of a sudden she becomes like a new woman. And and then all of a sudden, like Tyler Perry, he had the movie and the play, you know, the guy is the husband, he kicks her out the house, and he's like this rich dude now. Right. All of a sudden he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, and all of that shit. And it's like why are we not pointing out these women that's doing this fucked up shit and making them hero? What, what, kind, of, what kind of nonsense is this, bro? All right, yeah. All right, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I veered off on a trail. No, no, go ahead. <clears throat> so, we brought it up last week. Classic sports movies. Mm -hmm. That you can go back and watch again. Mm -hmm. So, this morning... Noah decided he wanted to watch a baseball movie. So he's like, I want to watch a baseball movie. I was like, I got one for you. Rookie of the year. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> my man was all into it. I tried to find nice. it in the outfield, but <laughs> I couldn't find a good stream for it. <laughs> So we set, we set, we settled on. You settled, you settled for rookie of the year. Settled for rookie of the year, which is a classic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yo, and you know what's so crazy? So, um, Mason watched the replacements for the first time today, right? Yes. And he was sitting there, and he was into it. And he watched it from the beginning to the end. Uh, I almost messed up. I almost messed up and put on uh, any given Sunday for him, but I was like, ah, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's at that age yet. It's just a little bit too much. Look. Yeah, it's just a little bit too much uh, sex and drugs and stuff going on in that movie. Uh, I, I'm gonna give him maybe about four or five more years for that one, but I did tell him that the next one would be uh, Friday Night Lights. Uh, I yo, and it's a true story. You know, so he's say again. The show is good too. Friday Night Light. I heard it was, and for some reason I never checked it out. But I do. I I should definitely uh, get on that man and check it out because I I did hear good things about it, brother. I did hear good things. Thing comes into play towards the end of the series. Yeah, he's, uh, he's in the series. Yeah. I'll check that shit out, bro. I gotta yeah. check that shit out, man. What's, what else, what else is going on out there in the world that we need to talk about, brother? Man, um, we got Super Bowl next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we got the Caribbean series going on right now in baseball. It's not the World Baseball Classic. Mm -hmm. it's a smaller scale version of it. Um, it's yo, it's it's not easy, bro. Or, yeah. Spring training starting up soon. Yeah, I see that, man. I NBA. see that. Uh, okay. Okay. I got a or question for you. Is that NBA regular season. How do you feel about this dude, Doc Rivers? Uh, now he's the coach of the, <laughs> the Eastern All-Star team, and he just coached one game. Hi, yo, I need your thoughts on that, man. Give me give me your thoughts on this, because I, I, I'm not feeling that at all. I will give him props because he came out and said the right thing. He's like, this is stupid. Like, I don't deserve to be here. Like, the only reason he's there is because the coach that coached in the finals is then the coach of the next year, if I'm not, mm -hmm. if not, if I'm not mistaken about the, uh, the all-star game. So since the previous coach, got fired. He took over. Now it's his job. Mm -hmm. He was saying that he would like to send his staff, the guys that have been there, send his check and the ring to the previous coach and go on vacation. Mm -hmm. But that's the stupidest rule I've ever heard. I mean, nobody, nobody can call it an audible and say, listen, uh, who was who the team that we beat in the Eastern Conference Finals? They Obviously, this coach just got here. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's also it's, this game really doesn't mean anything, so who cares who's coaching because it's not really about the coach. 801. Like, that's going to be the score. Like, no one plays. Like, <laughs> no, nobody. Nobody plays at all. I just, you know, and I'm not sure if I brought this before, but why the fuck doesn't Mark Jackson get any jobs now? Bro, he gets nothing. He's, I don't know who he pissed off in the NBA. But he had to piss somebody off because. I don't think that that's cool, bro. Blackballed is insane. I don't think that that's cool. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. So the little bit that I did hear from his tenure with Golden State was that he was very, uh, you know, he was a very, very like religious driven coach and he really wasn't all for the, you know, the the younger guys that he had on the team being out partying and clubbing and all of this other stuff. He really wasn't all for that stuff. And the owners at the time were they I'm just saying plainly, they was on some freak shit. Like they was they was 
living that Illuminati life. Right. And they kind of could tell that he wasn't he wasn't the exact fit for them. So in comes Steve Kerr, who kind of doesn't care about anything that goes on, uh, apparently. <laughs> so that was a new culture. And it's like ever since then, man, he's kind of just been like, like blackballed, man. It's just like you never see him anymore. And it's it's kind of messed up, man. Uh, I don't know. Like not one team. Cycle Doc Rivers. And I, I won't take credit for this stat because I, I heard Gilbert Arenas talk about it the other day. Mm. Doc Rivers hasn't won shit other than when he had three Hall of Famers on his team. Before that, he ain't done shit. After that, he went to Philly, Clippers, mm-hmm. with Kawhi, and DG. He was with Embiid and James Harden. Are you saying that Doc Rivers is a is superstar kryptonite? Is that what you're saying? That's what it sounds like you're saying, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. What has he really done? Other than his years with the Celtics in <laughs> the East with a very young LBJ. Yo, listen, man. Listen, bro. If I'm an owner or a GM, I'm staying as far away from, respectfully, staying as far away from Doc Rivers as as possible right now. Doesn't he hold a record for, like, the most blown 3-1 leads in NBA history? Like, uh, bro, I, I'm saying respectfully. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, if I was the Bucks, I don't know. I don't know is, if Steve Nash is coaching anymore right now. I would have went after Steve Nash. Fuck it, and, and, and had him come sit in. Uh, if you're not gonna go after Mark Jackson or somebody, you know, high name like that, that got suspended because he was hooking up with somebody in the back office. Is he, that, uh, is he in? He is, is with. I want to say he's with the Rockets. With Houston, right? Yeah. Yeah, I want to say he's with the Rockets. Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, that's another thing. You know, that's a that's a story for another time. That whole situation. How I get fired because this this hole was coming on. Anyway, anyway, I'm not. I'm not we digress. Yeah, I digress. But Emi Odoka had jungle fever. What do you want to do? So now we got spring training coming up. Mm-hmm. What do you think? What are your predictions for this year? Is it the uh, the evil empire, the Dodgers, or the new evil empire? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, the Yankees going to be the Is it Houston Listen, again? Man. Like, where's – what's the play? Well, my biased opinion, if the Yankees don't win a World Series, we've had a failed season. Uh, I think, again, we've gone out and dropped a lot of dropped a lot of money on the stage for all of these all of these strippers. You know what I'm saying? You know, we did our we did our usual thing. We went we went and spent money and brought in a whole lot of big name players and all of this other stuff. And I, I'm hoping it works out. I'm very curious to see how the Dodger season is gonna go. I think about midway through this year we'll we'll see how it uh how it pans out with the with the who who's the who's the Asian singing group? What is it, BTS? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how uh we'll see how they work out with them. And um as far as Houston goes. Listen, bro, I don't care who beats Houston. I just want somebody to beat them because ever since the shit that they pulled uh, years back against us, man, I will never have respect for Houston ever again. Uh, yeah. Just fuck them forever, bro. I'm I'm, I'm done with them. Uh, and as far as the Mets go... It's rebuild year for them. Bro, it's been rebuild year for the Mets since I was born. So that, you know, I, yeah, yeah, and it sucks too because I'm not a Mets fan by any means, but they got my boy Lindor. PR flag here. <laughs> <laughs> you 
my PR guys, I ride with them, whatever team they're on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stuck in a shitty spot. All right, he got he got his bread. I'll give it to him, but Mets ain't going anywhere for a few years. Yeah, they got some stuff coming up. The pipe, it's gonna be different. Uh, listen, bro. When it comes to the Mets, man, I just I don't believe them. Every year, and every year you hear the Mets fans, they talk about the same thing, and it's like, oh God. Listen, this is the Yankees' town, all right. Like I don't I don't know how much more we can. Weekend. Why don't you know what y'all should do? Why don't y'all move to Jersey? And this way you could have your own state. Matter of fact, y'all should share a stadium with the Jets and the Giants. You guys could get a, tr- a triple decker bunk bed, and you guys could all, you know, you guys could make uh, make some uh, shadow puppets at night. All that good stuff. Speaking of MetLife, it came out a few hours ago. MetLife is going to be the Scene for the finale, the World Cup championship, World Cup final will be at MetLife Stadium. I'm so happy to hear that. Maybe when they finally switch out this shit ass turf that has been getting everybody injured because they have rules and regulations that they have implemented for all the NFL stadiums that they will not play any game on turf. Of games, all of the World Cup games that are played in the U.S. will have to be played on grass. So that means Jerry's World is going to have to switch for grass for the World Cup. That means everywhere else, like it's going to be interesting. All of that sounds really good, especially for me. You know why? Because it sounds like they're about to have a whole bunch of revenue coming into MetLife Stadium. Which uh, bet life? You guys owe me some money. <laughs> so, so uh, as soon as that check clears, I'm gonna need you to come holler at your boy because I'm gonna need a little. <laughs> I'm gonna need a little slice. <laughs> All right, I still got some injuries. God damn it, I'm still not walking right. You know, I'm, I'm still I'm waking up in cold sweats in the middle of the night, just smelling piss and smelling the fucking. Hearing laughter and all this other stuff. We'll definitely get into this story <laughs> when we have our boy Craig on the show. Oh in my a few god! Weeks. Man. Craig was eyewitness to what happened, so stay tuned for that. Yo, I had a question for you, right quick. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of double back to WWE, right? And if yep. you and if you guys spoke about this on the other platform already, I apologize in advance. How do you feel about The Rock coming back and taking Cody's spotlight, bro? This is perfect because our episode was filmed on Thursday. Uh Uh-huh. So we didn't get the news of Mm. Rock Cody Mm -hmm. until that'll be coming up on this week. Shout Mm -hmm. out to Mm -hmm. the podcast. Um, I think it's kind of fucked up, man. I, I know it was in the works for last year and it mm-hmm. didn't because of Rock's filming schedule. But it's a bad look when The Rock goes on the board and then is now... I get it because there were supposed to be other superstars on this card and it's lacking the star power. Right? CM Punk got hurt. Brock Lesnar got kicked off. Um... Seth Rollins is dealing with injury. So there's a lot of factors that are dealing into it. Mm-hmm. Been building this shit since last year. It's Cody lost. You know, he's going to finish the story. It's the fucking poster of the WWE 2K24 that's coming out. And now you, you insert The Rock. And the last, the last I saw, the video had over 4 million views. Nine, 900,000 likes and over 500,000 dislikes on that video. Wow. So, wow. I don't know if WWE is going to pull an audible, if they're going to react to the fans' reaction, like, 
they're saying this might turn Cody into the next Daniel Bryan with the whole yes movement that was going. I, it, yeah, I, but does he need that though? I don't think he needs he that. He doesn't, but I, I don't know. It's a it's a very sticky situation. But you get, so, like, I, I get so, I get from a business standpoint, but uh-huh. it just sucks if you're cool. Here's here's my small take on it, and I, I I lean more on you in this in this area because I know you know more of the ins and outs than I do about what's going on in WWE right now. But just from an optics standpoint, as somebody who just sees what's going on every now and then, and you know YouTube algorithm, and I'm checking in, flipping through the TV, oh, what's going on, and all this other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Just here's his. I don't know. You just tell me if any of this makes sense. If it doesn't say, bro, nah, I don't think that's going to work. So, Rock is now on the board of whatever. It's public knowledge. Like, this is no secret, right? Right. Why not have The Rock become the new Vince McMahon? And I'm going to tell you how you set that up, right? Cody. Roman Reigns, WrestleMania, special guest referee, The Rock. Which way is The Rock going to go? Is he going to help out his family or is he going to go with Cody? You know, they come down to the wire. Rock turns on Cody. He's the biggest fucking villain in the company now. Everybody loves a villain, bro. Everybody. So now... You raise Cody's stock because now it's like, yo, the guy just can't get ahead because now right. you got the rock who's on the board or he's the new chairman and all this other shit. And now the rock has heat. Roman Reigns has mega heat because now his uncle is definitely the tribal chief CEO, whatever you want to call it. Why not do it like that? Like I, you just remove this dude Cody out the equation if he's been building and like I, I I don't understand so it also makes me think is that why they had Seth Rollins out there on Monday with that whole oh I think you should fight me and because I'm not gonna lie I was watching you know I was watching that clip I was on my way to work and was listening to like the, the YouTube or whatever and I'm like I don't know it just sounds weird like I've never heard anybody begging somebody to challenge challenge them for a title like that like it just it didn't sound authentic it didn't sound like I don't know it didn't sound right it didn't sound right and then to see the rock come out and all of this stuff I'm like hey now it kind of now it kind of makes sense I see what's going on you guys were kind of setting that up what I've heard what they wanted they want Cody to win the belt from uh-huh. and take it to SummerSlam and challenge whoever wins between Rock and Roman and have a title unification match. Uh-huh. And from uh, what they're saying, Rock doesn't want to lose to Roman. That's that's that doesn't the word. make any sense. Rock doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Your guy that have, doesn't make any sense. Right? It it doesn't make any sense. So, what are you gonna do? You're gonna have Rock win it, right? And not appear on TV every week, even though Roman doesn't like. So, you know, there's that. But you're not gonna have him show up and have a belt that means nothing like it does now because he don't want to lose i i don't i I don't get it i don't i don't i don't understand that either bro and i get i get what you're saying about the star power and all of this stuff but how how do you keep shitting on the guys that are like really putting in the work you know what i'm saying like i I, I don't know, bro. That's, I think it's that's the equivalent, right? That's the equivalent of the Super Bowl going on next week, 
and Tom Brady coming in and being like Brock Purdy. I'll take a seat. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'm gonna play for the uh, for the Niners in this game. I was like, yo, no. that's insane. That's fucked up, but I'm gonna be honest with you. That's probably the only thing that would save the Super Bowl for me. And maybe like, yo, you know what? Now I might watch this. Shit. <laughs> you heard and he's coming back and he's bringing right. Gronk. No, I might watch. I'm, you know what? Now you got my attention. I just might watch that shit. <laughs> Bro, I heard a crazy stat. Tom Brady, right, is the player who gave Patrick Mahomes his first regular season loss, first postseason loss, and first Super Bowl loss. All mm. came at the hands of Tom Brady. Wow. So I don't care. Wow. How big or how many Super Bowls Mahomes gets? There will always be one. Mm-hmm. And one. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. How many rings they got now? Two? They, they got, got two, two, right? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Damn, he six. gets that third. He get that third one, man. They might, uh, they're going to have to really kill the comparisons between Allen and Mahomes if you get that third one, bro. I mean, not that you could compare them too much now. I mean, I know that they're both greats, but I don't mean the thing if you don't got that ring, bro. Like, that's just, that's just it, man. That's just it, bro. And I, I hate to say it. I hate giving this dude any kind of accolades, but aye, aye, aye. Aye, 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 bro. It, it is what it is, bro. Whatever. Fuck right, him. Right now, right now he's matched up with Peyton. Peyton's got two. I think he got it a little better than Peyton, though. He, one, he got it with the same team. Mahomes has a little bit of a better core uh, of stars around him as to where Peyton was. Yeah, he had Marvin Harrison. You had Dallas Clark and all these other dudes. And it's like, it was like, uh, yeah. they, they, they look old. Say again? They never had the defense to do it. Yes. Yes. And then when he was with Denver, the defense back when Von Miller remember, remember when Von Miller used to play defense? Yeah. That's that's about that's what helped them win this championship then, back when they had a Von Miller who actually gave a damn about playing football, as opposed to the Von Miller that we have now in Buffalo, who's just playing around. Do, do you remember that Super Bowl? Where was it Seattle that came in and put the ass whooping of a lifetime on Peyton Manning? That Legion of Boom came out. Yes. <laughs> Make an impression. Yes. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. That was the, the uh the team should have had two Super Bowls. Yeah, he should have. But uh I mean Richard Sherman in Beast Mode, that's when Bro, you about to open up a whole nother can of worms, bro. <laughs> Marshawn Lynch, who uh at the one goddamn what? yard. Yeah, yeah, that didn't make any kind of sense. Insane. Yes. But <laughs> we are at our hour mark. Mm, Biggie, mm, mm. Give us the words of wisdom for the week before we wrap up this show. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I have to. I have to do it now because Bree's giving me that look like dinner's ready, motherfucker. It's time. <laughs> Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Let's go. Because yo, listen. Let me tell you something. You got a woman that that cooked dinner, man, and and you not there while that shit is hot. This is gonna be problems, bro. We're hoping for those in the OTBS universe, OTBS mafia. Hopefully for our Valentine's Day, <laughs> we will have the ladies, the first ladies. Oh my God! Oh, I don't know why. Will we 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 asking for trouble? We're asking for some real trouble. That will be real. a That's great episode. Uh, so as I as I recollect on on. This past week, uh, and all of the things that I've been able to be a part of. Uh, yesterday, I was at my boy, my boy James's baby shower. Shout out to James and Caleb Blocker. They're gonna be welcoming their first child. 
uh, any time now. I've known this dude James for over 20 years. And um, I bring that up because I don't, I don't, I don't think we value enough the importance of having good friends around you or just good people around you in general, man. And um, don't take it for granted. And I know a lot of times we get uh, we get caught up in life and, you know, you might not speak to someone and, you know, a couple weeks goes by, uh, a month goes by, six months goes by, a year goes by. Then the next year, you go, damn, it's been quite a minute since I spoke to X, Y, Z. And, you know, it, it's going to it's going to happen. And that's OK. But. When you do remember to reach out to that person or that person reaches reaches out to you, it's for a reason. Like you ever had that moment where somebody like that you haven't spoken to in mad long day to just pop into your head? You know what I'm saying? I swear, bro, every time that, that happens to me, I just take a second and shoot that person a text because it's a reason, man. It's a reason that that person is crossing your mind. You just never know. That might be God telling you, listen, this person is going through something right now. I need you to just send a text message saying hello, saying what's up. You know, you just never know. But having a, you know, having a real good friend in your life, that shit means everything. Everything, bro. And I'm not just talking about somebody that that you could call like, yo, let's go get fucked up and let's go clobbing. Nah, man. Nah, I'm not, I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody that you could call, God forbid, at one o'clock in the morning because you in a dark place and you just like, yo, I can't, I can't take another step and unless I hear some good words, you know what I'm saying? And I always try to be that for people. And yo, Fred, I know you are, you're a brother like that, man. Like you always somebody that can be dependent on, but yo, listen, if you have somebody in your phone right now that you're like, yo, you know what? I haven't spoken to such and such a mad long. Let me just check on them. Just check on them and see if they good. Cause they might need it, bro. They might be on that edge and you just never know because life right now is not easy. I'm telling you, it's not easy at all. It's not easy, bro. No way, man. For real, bro. For real. You know, me and Bree were talking earlier about, uh, don't know if New York is a place no more, bro. That's it's true, uh, man. Just it's don't know. It's just it's not safe. It's too expensive. It's, I don't know, bro. But That's what I got. You. We'll hitch our U-Haul to yours. And <laughs> but Tag with that being said, the Sports Frenzy podcast on Instagram and Facebook, the Sports Frenzy pod on Twitter. We should be up on YouTube. We'll throw the link up on Instagram. We thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Peace. You already know. You already know.